Hello and welcome to your Astrological Vibrations for Saturday, June 20th, 2020 by Gaia Blooming. I am Mimi and our energy mantra for today is I nurture myself through these powerful energies of transformation. And I'm going to do the scope for this uh, new moon solar eclipse. Now this is not a total solar eclipse. It is called an annular solar eclipse. Um, but it's actually one of the ring of fire eclipses where we can see like the ring of the sun around the moon. And that's one thing that you want to realize about eclipses. They always have um, some interaction between the sun and the moon. So there's always some level of relationship that comes up in the eclipse energies. Then there's always some level of interplay between shadow and light that comes up in eclipses. And I want to just mention, like, you know, sometimes we can be daunted by the energy of sh or shadow work, um, but look at the beauty of this eclipse. Like, we can't see it in the States. Where can people see it? Let's see. Africa, Europe, Asia, China, and the Pacific. So we don't get to see that here. But... <laughs> You can look online, the beauty of the Ring of Fire solar eclipse, this light emerging from, from the, the darkness. It is the interplay of the light and the dark that makes it so beautiful. And we want to remember that as we do the work through this eclipse energy. So this is our second of three eclipses. It is not happening until late in the evening, at least if you're in the States. Um, it'll be, let's see... The new moon is 11.41 p.m. Pacific time. So for most of the continent, <laughs> it is happening actually early on Sunday morning. There's a lot of different energies building up to it. And I just want to briefly go over those to start. So um, the sun. The sun hasn't even moved into Cancer until... 2.44 p.m. Pacific time. So solstice energy in the northern hemisphere, the longest day of light. I think it's going to be till 2039 that we have um, a eclipse on the solstice again. I believe that's when it was that I read. Uh, but here we have like, it's like the light, the light presides. It's here. It's pervading. It's above, it's coming it's it's winning. <laughs> Love wins. The light wins. And yet, the solstice to me also heralds, okay, the days are going to start getting shorter. We're going to go into that time of darkness. We always want to remember there's this everlasting cycle that's deeply intertwined together. And again, they serve each other. It works together. Um, so the beginning part of the day, we have the sun conjunct the north node, which you can go back and watch yesterday's scope because I went deep into that. But this is a very strong moment of destiny to have the sun conjunct north node and to have even this eclipse energy conjunct the north node. How are you being pulled into your destiny? Um, I want to put this out there before I dig into this astro because I think this is a very strong theme in this. The theme of into the future versus staying comfortable. Cancer energy is one that loves comfort. It's very attached to its roots. It is about home, family, foundation, the mother energy. It loves a nest <laughs> and it wants that nest to like last for it. And yet right now we're in a very, very major time of change. I actually have the fool card <laughs> in, in the cards for for today and the clinging to the past card. This is a time where we're being asked to step into the future, to embrace the spirit of change. So it may be around our home. There may be changes in regards to our family. Um, this may be our emotional uh, foundation that we're digging into. It may be stuff from the roots, <laughs> stuff from our ancestors that's coming up to be processed. There's so many ways that this can show up. But what I'm asking you is where are you being asked to change? Where are you being asked to show up in another way in and through this energy? Um, all right, so let's look at these energies building into this. Mars uh, Mars and Jupiter are connecting. They're having a sextile. That's a very good, happy connection. Mars is also squaring the moon 
in Gemini uh, before we reach the peak of this eclipse energy. So um, there's a lot of distractions in the house right now. <sighs> cool. Uh, need that focus. Um, that Mars energy, Mars and Pisces. Mars and Pisces is like, there is this divine plan. Even though we kind of feel like this, the fool stepping off the cliff, I have the trust card. And so it's like, where are you being called to tune in deeper, to honor your part in this divine unfolding, in this plan at this time? This does require tuning in. And that's one of the really big lessons of Gemini, which we want to remember because we have Gemini half of this day listening, listening to what's going on outside, but also listening to, to that wisdom that does reside within you that's deeper, <laughs> that's deeper than what you've maybe learned in this life. Oh, those noises. I think it's the cat. I think it's Luce. <laughs> Gemini rising. She's like, let me bring my mischief now. Um... Mars, Mars working with that Jupiter energy, changing up these foundations. I keep talking about Jupiter, Jupiter and Capricorn, even though it's retrograde, it feels like it's part of the builders of the new, especially as we step into a new level of our personal integrity. But again, that Mars energy is like, you can play your part, but you've really got to tune into what your part in the divine plan is. It's interesting. I just did my patron uh, video right before this come together on zoom and pull cards and one of the lessons was coming together pulling together uh to work together towards 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 the thing towards what we're building towards the goal and so it's asking us like where can you come together at this time that song just popped into my head come together to to build this new to be more efficient and to be more powerful. We are more powerful when we're working together. And I want to remind us that often we are more similar than we are different. Oftentimes we will focus on those differences, but we really are at the heart of ourselves. All of us, <laughs> even those you may not want to admit this is true for, more similar than different. So remembering that, working together. Moon will also square Neptune. It is getting confusing with all of the information. Do I believe? this theory? Do I believe this theory? Does this ring true for me? I'm not really sure. Oh my gosh, it's foggy. What am I supposed to be doing? Again, this is the call to drop in. This is where you can feel through it. This is where your discernment lies. And we do need to utilize discernment in how we're being called to walk and move forward. Um, all right. So Moon into Cancer, 2.44 p.m. I'm going to dig more into Cancer energy tomorrow. But again, home, family, foundation. We talked a lot about Cancer because we just had the North Node in Cancer. Nurturing energy, compassionate energy, mother energy, intuition. It's water. Water. It, it builds, or what is the right word? It uh, <laughs> works things down over time. Water is persistent. It is pervasive. Um, we want to use this water energy in ourselves. We are. What are? How much are we water? We're like cucumbers with feelings, I think some memes say, or complicated houseplants. Um, we want to use the water energy in us to help give us the stamina to keep moving, to keep showing up where we're meant to show up. But like I said, I'll get more into the Cancer energy uh, in later scopes. Um, the moon will move into Cancer at 11.02 p.m. Pacific time. So through the day, we're gonna be feeling really strong Gemini energy as the moon in Gemini finishes up. Now that moon in Gemini is going to be largely void of course minus hitting that north node point right before it shifts into Cancer and builds into that eclipse. So again, whatever's coming up for you on the emotional level, trust that it's part of the processing, part of eclipses and the energy of the dark moon, it allows us to process, it allows us to release, it rely, or allows us to show up and like physically even view the shadows that need to come up and be processed. And like I said, I have used the word process quite a bit. Um, I have the uh, clinging to the past card. And that's the thing is like, 
Don't cling to these energies that are coming up. Don't even spend too much time mulling over them. Just let them move through you. You don't have to pick them apart. You don't have to analyze them. What you need to know will come up for you. So just do realize that. Trust your process in this. Um, and then, like I said, the eclipse energy. So we reached that at 11.41 p.m. Pacific time. Okay, so like I said, this eclipse energy, the theme of it is um, into the future versus our comfort zones. The sun in Cancer and the moon in Cancer are conjunct the north node. Even though they're in different signs, because they're less than a degree apart, they are right there together. As well, we have the Sabian symbol, and the Sabian symbol is on a ship, the sailors lower an old flag and raise a new one. This is a major portal of change. It's a major chance to shift alliances. It's a major opportunity to raise a new flag. It's a major opportunity to surrender to the divine plan. So like I've been talking about, there's talk about the Mayan calendar and 2012. And one of the things I said before that came out was something about this year 2020 really felt like it was kind of echoing the 2012. I feel like in 2012, there was progress, but there wasn't enough. This year, 2020, it feels like we're doing the work, that we're really showing up, that we're ready to move beyond the comfort zones. We're ready to move beyond the complacency. And so what we have to just keep looking at is where, where we are stuck in the patterns. Going back to that last eclipse that we had that said it's like Groundhog Day, where are we stuck in Groundhog Day? Where are we stuck in the patterns? Where do we need to move out of that energy and into showing up for the future? The other part of this, it's an inconjunct. So inconjunct, don't see eye to eye. It's really difficult energy. It's Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn at zero degrees Aquarius in conjunct this eclipse. And it's reminding us there is a very bright future for us. Even if it doesn't seem bright right now, even if these energies seem very daunting right now, there is a bright future that we're all working towards. And so how are you working towards the future? How are you clearing out the old? And how are you taking those steps into the new? This is the, I think, the most important lesson in this eclipse energy. Yes, we have to face our shadows. That is not comfortable. But yes, we also have to take steps into this future energy, into building this bright, beautiful future. It is not going to be comfortable. <laughs> Change is not easy. We cannot pretend to know it all. That's part of that North Node energy. It's okay for you to be the fool. It's okay for you to not know. In fact, I think that's better because I think sometimes when we think that we know, we try to over control and orchestrate and we're really not meant to be doing that. When you're in that space of trust, you are not over orchestrating. So do hold space for that in this energy. At the same time, we're finishing up this Venus retrograde. We're deep in this Mercury retrograde energy. There is a lot that is being processed. We're days out from Neptune going retrograde. There is a lot of shift and change in this. Our foundations may not feel strong. This is where we need to root into ourselves, into the integrity, um, into our compassion, into that nurturing energy that we learned so strongly with the North Node moving through Cancer the last year and a half. This is also one of the last eclipses in the Cancer Capricorn um, polarity for several years. We have one more in Capricorn, and then we're finishing up these lessons. So it's like, this is your opportunity to really embrace the lessons of cancer. The lessons, the shadow lessons of cancer, which can be about martyring and taking care of everybody else before the self and fear keeping you stuck in place um, versus the lessons of nurturing, taking it easy, embracing the mother spirit. I have the Empress card, which can be that mother energy, using our intuition, using our creativity to form new solutions, again, as we step into the future. So this is really powerful energy. It may feel extra emotional. I don't think I mentioned it. It's zero degrees. That transformational energy is major with this, hence our energy mantra. But it's up to us to empower ourselves into the transformation 
please be willing to take an honest look at yourself at where you are being called into that transformation and how you can step into it for yourself, how you can empower yourself in and through these energies. So I think I'm going to leave that there. I'll probably go deeper into it even more so tomorrow before the eclipse um, in my next scope. But you can always book a reading with me. Email me, mimiclark at gmail.com. And besides that, the better it gets, the better it gets. There's more than enough love in the world for you, and you do have the power. Stay curious. Namaste.